Hey everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa, and today's a very exciting day where I'm going to show you how to paint a silhouette in kind of a really new and exciting way. Step by step, fully explained, every color mix, every technique, every tool I use, I'm going to share with you so that you can paint this for yourself at home. It's like a painting party at home that you can do. On the mic is my husband, John. Hello. He helps me bring these lessons to you by making sure that our cameras and equipment are pointed at what I'm doing. So when I'm explaining it, you can really visually see that. Also, if you check the description below and you open it fully up, you will see links to the website, a full material list uh, expressed down there, a bunch of other resources and links. And you may also notice that this is part of a program called Acrylic April. Like it'll be, this is what day in Acrylic April, what is all that about? It's a 30 day painting program that is all about painting landscape water. So water in landscape. And the idea is that you start it painting one and go all the way through painting 30 and each skill set builds up on the previous one, teaching you, especially if you're a beginner, the fundamental things you have to know about how to paint landscape in water. So whether you're coming here because you want to paint this cute surfer girl at a sundown, you know, ready to go out and catch a, or she's come in from the beach, I would think, because it's really not a lot of girl out there. Or if you're here following up yesterday's sunset, ready to take those purple and orange skills to the next level, you have come to the right place. I don't really know what we could say except get those paints, get your brushes, come back and meet me right now. I'm going to show you how you can paint this. For today's lesson, I am painting on an 8x8 eight eight canvas. I have the acrylic colors, the oxazine purple, quinacridone magenta. This is tight knit yellow, sometimes called Naples Yellow Light. I have a whole blog about this color because it's got some weird naming stuff. If you check the description below, it'll take you there. And the blog will make it simple and give you the exact brands that have it under the names that they sell it. So you don't even have to worry about that. And there are a lot of choices. I have Cad Yellow Medium and Cad Red Medium Titanium White. Put a wish or intention on the canvas that uh, everything is good in your studio companion, your little pets' lives in the studio. And then also that things are going well in your community, safety and, and well-being in everyone's community. Um, also today, if you want to know more about materials or get extra help with resources, if you check the description below, you want to go to the website, you want to get the mini book and download it so you can have that step-by-step -step instruction. But it's also important because the mini book gives you alternate um, ways to get images on Canvas and also tells you what materials we're using in each step. So it's really actually very helpful if you're doing this. I think you're going to actually really enjoy painting this and be surprised at how well you can do it. I'm going to draw this in today, but if you don't feel like drawing, there's both a grid and a traceable available to you on the website to make both of those tasks easy. John, mm -hmm. throw up a step. So a tool here that I have that's a little bit dirty, kind of dinged up, this is called a T-square. It's not particularly expensive, but it is very useful, especially if you're doing any water in landscape. I'm going to make a mark on my surface at the halfway point, which on, on mine is four inches. I'm going to come across and divide this with a line. This is a watercolor pencil, and that's what I do the wishes in, and I do these lines in, and that's so that they blend into the paint and don't do this thing called uh, uh, induced discoloration where from the structure it comes up and stains your paintings. That's why I like to use chalk or watercolor pencils because it protects your painting later. I'm going to actually be painting, even though there's a lot of reflection, the ocean gives us a sort of little break in that. And that means that I'm not going to do just the color in the middle and then blend it out on both sides like mm -hmm. a mirror. I'm going to do a mirror-ish. 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 So right about here, let's say about mm, two inches perhaps from the horizon. And then up here maybe about an inch. We're going to wander out a shoreline. And I may turn my surface to the side a little bit so that I can That's okay. get that and bring some of these lines through. These are little waves and things. Mm-hmm that are coming down that we get to do at the front of the ocean. And then I'm going to remind myself that there is more happening here. So this will be in this kind of peachy purple. 
whereas this will be in the sky color and then again a bright reflection of the sky color. Thus, if you're doing acrylic April and you're doing every day's painting, then you understand why yesterday's painting was in the colors that it's in to give you a preparation for this. To make it easier so you kind of understand the, the concepts and the simplistic idea. And if you want to check that out, that's part of acrylic April. <sighs> I say that we begin the sky, John. Okay. Not a step. We're just going to... Just go to the sky. Mm, no, let's call this a step because otherwise... People won't know that I divided it. That's let's true. call it a step. It's let's just call it a step. even as a short step, let's call it a step. It'll be easier for you at home painting along. So coming back, we're gonna do the groovy, groovy sky, and I am excited about it. I'm gonna start it with a bright, this is a number 26 short handled bright brush. The number really isn't that important. It's about an inch across. Um, the reason I always say numbers are not that important is it's only important to the brand in that line um, because there isn't a universal sizing. Mm -hmm. But however, if you're looking at the Ruby Satin short handles, not long handles, but just the short handles, that would be useful information. I'm going to start doing this amazing ombre. And to begin that, I'm going to kind of blend out the watercolor wish I had up at the top. And I'm going to grab a little bit of my yellow and a little bit of my orange. There is a lot of color transitioning here. Yeah. And that's going to be sort of an interesting and maybe even difficult thing to do if you've never done it before. But just breathe, stay calm, follow along. You'll be surprised at what you can do. I'm just going to go across. And I'm going to get into a lot more yellow. That. And I'm going to wipe off my brush and I'm going to get into my Naples yellow light, the tight knit yellow. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to come here and bridge there. I'm going to add a little white. This is a tough transition. Why so is if you'll remember how I was talking about uh, in, in the other purple landscape, uh, sunset where they're complementary colors. Mm -hmm. So going from that orange into any kind of purple is always kind of a, a challenging journey. So I'm going to take a little bit of my dioxazine purple into my quinacridone magenta and actually add quite a lot of this tight and a uh, tight knit yellow and some white and come into the top and start to do this. And it's not an easy color, but it is doable. And if somebody explains it to you, then it's way more ah. doable. And that's a little stripey at this moment. And I do want to have a more blended version of this. But this is a great beginning because I can come in and eventually work out some really nice transitioning as I go. I'm going to rinse out. One of the things that you don't want to do is take a lot of paint color to a bunch of different locations around the surface. I'm going to grab a mop. This is a dry one inch oval mop and I'm going to go ahead and do some blending just initially. And we'll call this Lendy Sky Layer 1. <laughs> Rinse that out because I don't want that on, on the mop just sitting there. Mm -hmm. Just sitting there. Now, down here, I want to bring in um, some of this purple and to get some control over it because there's some curve lines. I'm going to switch to my cat's tongue. And I'm going to take my peach mm -hmm. and uh, my pink and purple. This is the kind of mirror. This is that mirror that we're going to be doing. 
And I might even get some of the oranges over here. It's very interesting trying to capture the sky color. A lot of times we avoid working in contrast because it can feel a little overwhelming. But I would highly suggest that if you can practice the skill mm -hmm. and do it, you will love it. The results are special. I'm just getting that like peachy sky color. And it's a weird color to get. It's one you probably would not normally ever mix. Except when you're doing a... This kind of sky. Except when you're doing this kind of sky. In landscape, really. I'm going to turn my surface just a little bit, just so I can make sure that my horizon is nice. Mm-hmm. I'm keeping a nice horizon. And this is blocking in. I'm not trying to do a finished final painting here. I'm just trying to make sure that I'm blocking in what I have. Now coming through here, I'm going to have my oranges again. These are quite bright. I'm just brushing it across. I like when, how bright that orange is. And it's going to get brighter when you know you're going to do a couple coats. Mm -hmm. Right? Like right now it's kind of streaky and brushy. But this is coat one. And it's coat one because we do a lot of contrasting colors here. And when you know you're going to have a lot of contrasting colors, you want to do that. I'm going to go ahead and add a little of my pad red to my dioxazine purple. It kind of darkens it. It does. And I'm going to just brush across very lightly. And again, this is just that first thought of these color transitions, right? Mm -hmm. That we have. And then we're going to come back into the purple pink that we've got at the back here. That speaks a bit to what's happening maybe in the sky, but this is just definitely and distinctly more maybe a little of the Naples yellow light, but just much more purple. Mm -hmm. so this is a really beautiful landscape. And it is a silhouette, but we're gonna we're we're gonna treat it like um a much more complicated subject matter. Because, I mean, even she shaded, so it's that next step in that art journey. It's a lot going on, for sure. Uh, it's a good time to kind of think about those values. I may want to lighten this value just a bit back here with some white. See what I'm doing? And blend that in. And I'm doing this while everything's a little wet, so I can kind of feather it, blend it in just a little. You know, I just want it laid out places and kind of know where it's going. That is this step. We're going right. to, well, what? Is it okay? Okay. <laughs> we're going to dry it and then we're going to come back and start putting in the next layer and more refining detail up in the sky. So as we go forward in the next step, I'm going to be adding a product to the list. It's not a paint or color. It's gloss glazing liquid uh, by Golden Artist Colors. It's a slow drying extender. So what this does is this improves the brushability of your color. It slows down the drying time and allows you to do the thin transparent glazes. Now, normally products that are called glazing medium don't do that. They just allow you to do thin transparent glazes and they dry really fast. Mm -hmm. But this slows the drying time down. It's very forgiving to beginners slow drying agents in acrylic can be really challenging for beginners and this is the one product that i found that's beginner friendly for that type of uh, medium because hmm. if you use like a, a true slow drying agent which they often let call um either uh slow dry gel or uh 
a proper term for it is retarder, which just means it slows the drying time down. Mm -hmm. um, what will happen is, is if you add too much of that to your paint, your paint won't ever dry. I know. It just tastes sticky and gooey forever. Forever. This doesn't do that to you, which is why I recommend it. I know that's a long-winded explanation of that product, but just in case you didn't know, I wanted you to know. I'm going to start out, I think, maybe with my number eight cat's tongue, and I'm going to get it wet. I may change water. Whenever I'm working with purples and yellows because they're compliments, I change my water a lot. Yes, John? You know, if someone what? just showed up, they might think you talk a lot. <laughs> just... They might. They might. They might, and that would be a fair thought of theirs. <laughs> If you just came here and thought this lady talks a lot, I mean, fair. <laughs> fair. I've gotten that note before. Have you? <laughs> I have. Some some teachers and stuff have said this to me. I'm adding a little bit of my glazing medium to my cad red, and I've added a little bit of the yellow, and I'm going to come across here. I'm going to try to create a brighter band of this orange. I really want this to be quite a lot brighter. like that very much. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I will wipe out. Wipe out! <laughs> just, just so I can get into these brighter colors. Might get a little of my glazing liquid in there. And again, it just improves the blendability and brushability of your product. I'm going to turn a little bit to the side, and that's just so that I can have a nice angle to what I'm doing. That makes sense. No, because I just want a nice, nice angle. I wipe off my brush on a towel, and sometimes I'll come back and just kind of really try to create a space there. I'm going to continue to come up, and I'm going to add a little of my Naples yellow to this mix over here, maybe even some titanium white. I'm going to be brushing back and forth in this way. See, I'm just blending by working the edge of this brush into what's below it and everything is still wet so i'm working what's called wet into wet it's a very helpful way of going and then i can come right into my purple and pink mix You want to make sure there's just enough purple in there for it to be like that kind of lavender sky. Some blendability in there. Come up from the top. Rinse out. Now, if it's going gray on you, you will have just too much yellow, not enough purple, magenta, and white. It is definitely some work. Well worth it, though, when you get it right. Because it's almost like a soft, putty lilac. It's just a wild, soft color. Now I'm going to turn a little bit to the side because I want some control over my blending. I'm adding blending medium. And I will probably get into the yellow and white here. And I'm going to come between these two. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to blend, 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 blend. Because I'm wanting a soft transition. And see how I'm kind of creating it? Yeah, I do. This is going to be, it, it, if you're like, oh, <laughs> I get it. But you can do it. You can do it. You really can do That's it. That's what the thumbnail says. You can do it. <laughs> Add a little peach. We're going to see if it's clickbait. It's not clickbait. <laughs> I, I wrote many books. And <laughs> Grays and I don't and know. <laughs> I don't think you really mean it. <laughs> Just. I think you're just, this is this Also, is it's a me. very sad version of clickbait. If this is my version of clickbait, <laughs> I don't understand what clickbait is then, right? You can see I'm just creating those soft transitions. You keep wiping the brush off there. I do. I rinse out and wipe off because I very, very much want to have some control over my color. Now, a lot of folks have asked about that in the questions. Mm -hmm. Like... I get too much paint in my brush, in Gotta, the belly of the brush. And the you do. Brush. You can build up paint in your brush. You can very easily build up a lot of paint in your brush. And that can be really problematic for you. 
Um, and so what you see me do is I, I rinse out and I come back and I wipe off on my towel. Mm. I always wipe off because if I rinsed off deeply, I could have water all up the handle. And I want to get that off for two reasons. Water is destructive to the handle. And because a hidden drop coming down and dropping on my painting right now, which has ruined my work. The hidden drop. The hidden drop. It is the assassin. It is the assassin that has come to destroy your painting. You cannot let it destroy your painting. You've got to get it early. It's going to escape. Escape. <laughs> it's going to escape and get on my painting. And it, it wants to. And I want to say, like, uh, I want to like spoof like Dora and be like, "Droppy, no droppy, droppy, no droppy, <laughs> droppy, no droppy." <sighs> Moms get it. <laughs> like Dora knows. I want to say right now, like that. Uh, uh, certainly, my kids grew up on Dora. Mm -hmm. So every once in a while, you just come here and you're like, "Oh, the will there be Dora jokes?" Yes. Yes, there will. Forever. A few. Forever. And SpongeBob, too. Picking stuff happened. Okay. That is looking pretty, pretty good. Going back with a little bit of orange there and brush that in. No. And then I might get just a smidge of purple. Kind of goes a little brown. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just, just at the edge, you've got to be delicate with this. If you're not sure, dip it. It is nice to give some tonality to the horizon line. And I may come back when it's a little more dry with like a purple, like over the top, to give it like that purple haze. Ooh. It has a journey, right? That is. Let's dry and come back. So hopefully at this point we have a nice blended sky. I'm going to come in with a number six hog round brush. Again, the number is only relevant if you have a Cambridge. Um, but what you want is something about the size of your pinky that is chunking hog that is interlocked. Those are the key words you're looking for in your brush. Mm. A lot of brushes do that and you just want a good one. With hog, the things to keep in mind is that it can get soggy. Um, so you have to dry it out with a towel a lot. And you may have to finger shape because as they get wet, they can kind of blow out and get like crazy hair going. So, you know, those things are our realities that we may be dealing with. I'm going to get factors. just a little water on here. What? They're just factors you have to deal with. They're just factors. I'm going to make some orange here. Some definite, definitive orange. And I'm going to start putting in, I'm going to chalk in where I know my son's going to be. Okay. My son is going to be like kind of right here. And it's actually a half. It's one of the ones where it's on the half. I haven't done a half on the horizon in a while. Ooh. I'm always like near it, never on it. I'm going to start making little efforts. These are kind of clouds in perspective, right? Because as, as, as they come near the horizon, you'll have clouds that are far away. Mm-hmm. If you're trying to create better skies, that's something that you want to kind of think about is like, what is the perspective of the cloud? Not just its viewpoint on literature and politics and <laughs> world geopolitics, <laughs> but also like where it lives in the sky. If your brush feels wet, you just come in and you dry it off and you'll know it feels wet because instead of kind of being a fluffy dry brush experience, it's sort of like eh, putting things down and maybe... Uh, uh, unsatisfying way mm. and then you might be like all oh, my brushes are putting things down in an unsatisfying way now what <laughs> <laughs> now you were saying that it, it all it, it never hurts to reset clean your brush go back and then it, reload it never hurts to just if you're not getting the result you want stop drop reload mm. stop rinse stop rinse reload really stop rinse reload you know, and, and you don't have to have exactly my tools, but I will explain to you why I'm choosing the tools that I'm choosing. And there are reasons for it. Big important reasons. 
that I'm leaning into these things. You'll notice that the shapes that I'm making are are very regular. Mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not making like little round circles. They're not patterned. They're I really not try not to. Nature rarely gives you a good pattern. If it does watch out, that's probably poisonous. Oh. If nature's like, here's a pattern you can see, just back away from it. There is the coolest tree that grows in hexagons. What? Its its branches grow to form little hexagons. I'm not even kidding. It's really, really pretty. Really? Yeah. No, it's, what? it's yeah. It's just it's no, it's not now perfect. I'm gonna have to Google that. Yeah, it's not perfect, but if you look up at the tree from the ground, each of the branches segment out that form little hexagons, and it's just naturally how it optimized for its branch thing. But it's uh, I'll find the name of the tree. Yeah, I'm gonna check that out. I'll tell you what I Google stuff. I do the other day. Somebody was in the live. Not somebody, I just don't want to out them. We all know who it was was in the live chat saying this is where I'm and here's my time zone and they were like it's. It's like 1916 or 1816, and I was like, I, don't, I gotta Google that. But see, it used to be that I would have to just sit there not knowing what that time was, but now I'm like, what time is this time on the universal standard clock? And it's like, oh, it's six o'clock. I'm like, oh, okay. Now I know what we're talking about. Because I, do, I don't know how to say good night, good morning, oh my gosh, you're up late. Mm. I don't know what the polite thing is to say. Without, a, unless I know what time it is, and I don't military time well, and I'm also not on the universal clock. So I am dropping my brush. You'll notice I touch my brush up and down, and I'm trying to make very random shapes, right? Yeah. I make interesting random -y shapes. I'm up here maybe a little more orange than down low. Really fun to kind of create cloud banks that feel like a summer day that you remember. Maybe this is a summer day you have recently seen, or maybe you haven't seen a summer day since 2019. Some of us have not. <laughs> Depends on when you're watching the video. Uh, maybe YouTube is still here years later, like a decade later, and you're like, who is this woman with the hair? What is she talking about? But that is a good cloud lesson, so I will listen to her. Back in the before times. Maybe you're on Roku. I don't know. You'll be watching on Roku. It seems like I'm in your house, but I'm not. In your house. I like you. You're in my house. <laughs> well, I'm supposed to be in your house. <laughs> oh, that's looking really good. That looks really, really good. All right. Now. I want to take a minute and evaluate if I like the shapes, everything that I've got. Because the next bit I'm going to come over, I'm going to come over with some purples. Purples are going to be real similar to the colors that I got up here in the sky. Mm -hmm. okay, so I'm going to take my purple up into my quinacridone, like we do. Like you do. Like we all do. Put a little titanium white into it. It's a bit darker. I'm going to come in here and add these shadows, but I want to leave some of the orange that I painted visible. So you've got to be light with this. Tapping up and down. There's like a glow that's happening here, and you can't get the glow if you paint away all your orange. Mm -hmm. you got to keep some of your orange going. Some of your orange going. I love that sky. Oh, that's lovely. Lovely. Paint a little bit of a drama sky. The sky is so dramatic. Very dramatic. Very dramatic. The super sky. Oh, it's man. It's important to just not let it get too... Now a little more white if I need to. The edges here. It's it's that a little more white. Amazing how they're the the lighting around them. Just paint the clouds. 
adding a little bit of white to it. You know, if I want to get into like a deeper purple, I can come up and maybe say up in here, or perhaps a little bit of a upper atmosphere kind of fluff. Mm -hmm. These happen. And you can go like a shade lighter, I mean shade darker than the sky itself. You get a sense of little distant creatures. Aren't they lovely? They're doing their stuff. They're doing their thing. They are. Kind of floating up there in the sky. And that's all they want to do. They just want to float up here and be cloud in the sky. They're not they're not asking you nothing. They're just saying, Let me be my cloud. You do you. They're like rivers and lakes in the sky. Mm -hmm. I think that was a, a trip to me the first time I realized that scientists sometimes see clouds as like a sky river. Or a sky lake. Yeah, like it had never occurred to me until I watched all that stuff on like how the sand rainforest. goes from the Sahara and makes it to the Amazon uh -huh. rainforest. That was crazy. That was That was like, man. Why is school not like this all the time? Like, I would have been, like, leaning in my chair if they were like, did you know that fossils from the Sahara travel across? And, like, all the chain of events. But I don't think they knew any of that stuff when I was a kid. Mm -mm. I think they were like, the world is a mystery, but we think there's gravity. I, th I think Coach was having a good time getting through the book as we were. <laughs> <sighs> so my history was spotty. You know, <laughs> I love my daughter. She's in she's in a health class, <laughs> and uh, she doesn't feel that the information is particularly helpful <laughs> or accurate. <laughs> so she fact checks it. It's like this isn't really currently accurate. Now I can come in here and even kind of add a little of my red to this. Interesting. So it's the red in that purple. It is darker, but it's sort of different down here. A little bit. Mm. I feel like these are just too separate, so I'm going to bring these together. Okay. When I look at them, I'm just like, you're just like, yeah, there we go. Sometimes you look at it and you're like, like, they were too much in the same keeping. And I wanted them to be a little more connected. And you can do that, by the way, as you're painting. You can be like, you need to have a little more together than you currently do. A little red into it. There we go. Some, some stuff is happening now. Yeah. Things that they used to know. Do you remember when they thought eggs were killing us? I, I remember when there was just about everything they thought was going to kill us. And then all the stuff that was killing us, they not, did nobody noticed. <laughs> <laughs> Oopsie. Was that it? Oh, we didn't know. <sighs> oh, good times. Good times. Looking back. Going to continue to light, uh, add a little purple into this mix over here and kind of come across. We men I mentioned that I might do this where I come back with just a little... And a haze of purple over here. And if I need to, a neat thing I can do is I can get my glaze. Hmm. Isn't the glaze a powerful thing? Oh, wow. Such an awesome sky. Try to have fun with it. I mean, you don't have to. Like, you're not obligated to, but, I mean, you painted here for a reason, so I assume it's to have some fun. Mm hmm You take a little bit of red and yellow. 
kind of come around here and brighten this space around where the sun's going to be. Here we go, that's enjoyable. Enjoyable little touch. And then it's no surprise, or maybe it is a surprise. Maybe it is a surprise. I assume it's no surprise, but perhaps let's it see. is. Let's I'm see gonna take if we're a little, surprised. See if you're surprised, we're gonna take a little bit of white. Let's set that sun. It's a very nicely set sun, is it not? Mm -hmm. I like how set it is. I like how set it is, and I like how the clouds are, and I think that that is all lovely, 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 lovely. <laughs> I'm fine. So it's a great time to kind of look at it and evaluate it, decide if there's anything else you want to add. I'm going to go on to the next step because I'm ready to paint some water and some beach. So now we're going to come forward and start working in our water. And this is a lot of fun because there's some interesting reflections and shadows happening on the water. And in some sense, there's some silhouetting happening. I'm going to, I think I'm going to take, I'm going to continue with this number six hog round. And I am because I kind of like the loose painting of it. Mm -hmm. If you're not enjoying it, you could switch to a bright or a brush or a cat's tongue, whatever you felt like you had more control over. This is just what I'm feeling right now. So I'm going to go with it. I'm going to take my purple up into my quinacridone magenta because that's been going super duper well. And I'm going to add my navels yellow to it and a little white, getting that beach color, right? Yeah. Well, that's not even the beach color, it's a watercolor. I'm going to come across and make sure that I've got some bright violet reflections. I'm going to turn my canvas. It is, I'm brushing across, I'm going to brush across horizontally first, but I'm going to mm -hmm. turn the canvas because that's where I have the most comfort in that stroke. Don't turn your head to see me. Just download the mini book and look at the straight on image. <laughs> um, but this sometimes helps me because... Uh, I would normally, if I sat at a table, I would have an easel here, a table easel, and the painting would be facing me. It is better, though, for the camera and for you guys that the painting is flat to the surface so you can see everything that's going on. Uh, on, the, on the easel, when we paint at the easel, which we'll be back to in May, um, or who knows when it is because if YouTube is still here, it, it, it could be May already, and you're like, wait, you're back to the these videos are up forever and I have years and years of them. I love it when people like find a really old video and they like give uh, us technical advice over something that we totally already <laughs> fixed. And they're like, you know, your sound is really bad. I'm like, good news. <laughs> we have whole new sound problems. I mean, it's sort of fun though, right? Hmm. Well, fun for me. I continue here. Now I will. As I come forward, I do kind of want to maybe pull a little lip forward and give this some dimensionality and shape because water is like that. Uh -huh. And we will be playing with those lips and power of that wave that we would have. Fun to do. Fun. Fun for me anyways. I like it. Well, that's looking a little more reflecty. I want to get some more white into it. A little more white, and I have it be even a little more reflecty. So I found the name of the weird plant. You did? Mm hmm <laughs> Google. <laughs> yes, what is it? It's called the, uh, the, let me make sure I say this right, Launia abor aborus aborescens? Launia aborus abor Hmm. L A U N. You know what? I feel like not to make more work in your life, but I feel like in the I'm video gonna... you should pop up a picture of the plant and the name with a little arrow. Oh, I'll so see if sorry I can... for the editing time that I've now given you. 
We'll see if we can we can get something in there. That'd be kind of cool. But it's got a weird name, and it looks like a chemistry bush. That's how you can find it if you Google it. It's pretty easy. I'm adding a little more red to the purple, and I'm coming up here in this uh, front purple reflection that I've got going on. I'm just taking advantage of the fact that down here I've got purple and purple I've got to do. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to come out and lots more of my quinacridone. And say through here, mm -hmm. I'm going to... I can't do every shadow here because we've got that cool shadow coming off of her that looks like a heart. Oh, yeah. Just more magenta a little bit as we go through. Can even get a little of my Naples yellow cad yellow mixture over to it and kind of warm it. See how I'm doing? I do. And I'm brushing that right in. Mm -hmm. And that just creates a little bit of a glow. All right, we're kind of working a little bit of a glow here. Very nicely glowy. We gotta glow it. Even though it's dusk, even though it's deep, and we could just go stripe, 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 and be done with it. And then you're probably thinking, well, then why didn't you? <laughs> Previous video. Um, <laughs> different technique. Different techniques, different art concepts, right? Sometimes we need to, you know, go deep into something that we're doing. I'm going to also start to take some of this into, you know, our water a bit. Coming up, say, from the sun. Mm -hmm. And brushing back and forth horizontally. I just want to start creating that sense of glow out there. And, and that sky is very glowy. I'm going to brush this orange. I had a little bit of the cad red, cad yellow, and some of my titanium white look kind of up here. Mm -hmm. And I'm brushing a little of the orange along here. So it's different than the usual corridor of light that we do. And I'm going to go ahead and get my glaze involved. I'm going to pull my glaze into it because I want to improve my brushability. And I really don't want it to feel like a dry brush as much as it is. And add just some orange. And I've got the glazing medium in it. I'm glazing the water because it's a glowing. Mm -hmm. You see it a glowing? I don't know if you can just, but it is. I totally do. I mean, like, you that's... You're adding the sky reflection there. I'm coming down. And, and then when I get down into this, I definitely want to get more into the cad red and cad yellow space. But I'm going to use my glaze to keep control of it. I always get my quinacridone in it. And that does some interesting kind of transitional stuff. More glazing medium. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to brush harder because I do want it. I do want the purple to show through. There we go. Oh, I'm yeah. Getting like kind of a more thoughtful glaze on that. Get some quinacridone. Some white. Some navel's yellow. Blow this up in here. Mm -hmm. So amazing how the top of the painting just looks like a sky. It does, doesn't it? Now you're Maybe. keeping your, your brush strokes horizontal there again? I am. Even if I turn the easel, I'm really trying to keep these somewhat horizontal. The reflections, I really will want to keep kind of somewhat horizontal. Just a bit. All right. Just, just a bit. 
And then I may come in and get some yellow and have a little bit of white and some glaze. Trying to find a space that's kind of like this yellow purple. Mm -hmm. It's a little challenging to locate. I'm going to get it though. I'm adding a little yellow to my quinacridone over here. It's just that there's some you know, interesting reflections happening out here. Mm -hmm. Kind of imply a little light hitting the wet part of the beach. Very light with my brush pressure. Now, I've got a lot of work here to do, so I don't want to go too far into it because she's going to sew and pack everything. Mm -hmm. But I may want to wait till I see her because she'll be ca capturing and creating some interesting shadows in everything that's going on. Huh. Uh, I think I've got one more kind of little orange that I want to get out here. I need more yellow is what it is. I'm working through my yellow. On this painting, I work through a lot of yellow. If it gets away from you, dry, start again. I love the reflections that are happening on the beach now. Oh yeah, they're gonna be they're gonna be the sauce of awesome. They will be the awesome sauce. There we go. I need I need some just distinctive little glow. See how it's very glowy? Mm -hmm. There's a very light pressure that I'm putting out here. Oh, there we go. That's what my quinacridone and my cad red. Mm -hmm. They are my one of my favorite color mixes are my quin and my cad. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like they do some really special stuff. As you can see right here. Oh, yeah. And just touch it and play with it. There we go. All right, let's call that a step because that was a lot. We did a lot. There was a lot there. That there was a lot to it. Very reflective beach. Very reflective -y beach. We did a lot. Now we're going to come back and do a little more. I'm going to come back in and start putting in some dimensionality to the water. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do that with my dioxazine purple. And I'm just getting my pure dioxazine purple. In fact, in this painting, I actually plan to use this almost as the black of the painting. Really? Yeah. I'm going to bring a little line there and kind of come forward. This is how I'm going to delineate how some of the ocean water is happening and the waves at the shore. It'll be super fun. Well, for me, hopefully for you as well. I'm enjoying it. <laughs> you know, what a strange thing we've done. Because, like, it, I, I don't think I ever thought about if you were paying attention to my art before in our, in our when we were married and I was just working and you were working. You know, so I never thought about what that's like. But it's been really nice, actually, to have you be here participating in what I'm doing artistically. I just have enjoyed it, if I may say. Okay. Unexpected, didn't, didn't, <laughs> it wasn't something that I, I thought I, you know, would expect or necessarily need. Well, you know, we've really been doing this most of our marriage. Like, if you go back to our first house in Hockley where you had your jewelry set up in the living room and you just made stuff while talking to me while I was doing work crazy stuff. <laughs> it's true, though. I guess that's true. I'm going to so, come here and tap a little thing. So I'm just drawing these little lines. These lines are the waves. Right? Because on this kind of lighting, and I'm just making little tapping marks where the water is maybe a little churny. See how that goes? 
and cinnamon made danger jewelry. I did make some <laughs> jewelry that could take your life. <laughs> Don't fall down while wearing it. <laughs> Seriously, it's a good thing not every piece was sold. I could have been sued. Very pokey pokey. Wearability was not my concern. I was like, the shape, hardest pain, and angles. I had a lot going on. I don't know what it was. It was a thing. <laughs> she was surprised that I still had some. I was. I was so super surprised that you kept as much as you did. There's. I have a treasure chest of small things I keep. I'm going to turn this aside just to make sure that I keep my line straight. I'm going to do the same here. Mm -hmm. I think this is going to end up maybe being one of my favorite sunsets. And it's so funny because people are like, have you painted that sunset before? I'm like, would you paint all the sunsets? No. I could do sunsets every day for a year, and I would have just barely scratched the surface of the sun setting sun as a topic in art. Just barely. Now, at the, at the sun itself, I'm going to get a little bit into my cad red. And I make sure that I kind of... Blend that on the purple a bit. It's just a nice touch. And then I want to check my horizon real fast. Mm -hmm. Just some. I get my brush wet and make sure the flow of my paint is good. Now back here, I'm going to make little short sort of strokes that kind of imply choppy water. There's bits of water showing through, but a lot of it is fairly choppy in the distance. And that's a little bit the viewpoint, uh, perspective, distance to the horizon. There's, there's a few reasons for that. Oh, there's that ocean. O ocean happens, you know. But the purple starts to add that, you know, the wave, the depth of the wave, ocean. Well, and, you know, you see waves, actually. This this is a really great way of understanding how you see motion in water. Mm. Um, we did that How I Paint Water course, where I just showed you guys the techniques of why I make the decisions I make in water. Yeah. And we did it in black and white, which was kind of very experimental. But looking back, I'm super glad I did it that way. I may visit that teaching method again in a more different kind of way. But again, back to that. Oh, yeah. Because I think it was useful. Super duper useful. And you can just so easily make like little bits of waves coming over to the side. I mean, she's here before the surf, I feel, but okay. <laughs> she's kind of a small day. Maybe she's waiting. Oh, those waves. See little ripples in the water, super important. Water does stuff. Water does stuff. That's it does. It. It's busy, busy business water. Especially if it's coming in from the ocean. It's uh, it's very rarely just still. In fact, it's almost disturbing when I see water that's super still. I, I just instantly go to, there's got to be something in that. <laughs> still water be scary. Sharks. <laughs> Not sharks. <laughs> Not sharks. I'm going to add a little white to uh, my... It would take nothing. You put a little fin and just... poking up here. There's these sharks in the water. 
just adding a bit. It's not it's not white white. It's just a bit of froth that we're kind of talking about. See, I have this this I don't know if you'd say dream as much as maybe nightmare that someday you're going to talk me into going into the the ocean. I'm going to get bit but i'm gonna have one no of those i told you, you so i love my husband someone can talk him into anything no one can talk my husband into anything he can talk other people into things but he cannot talk no one can talk him into anything <laughs> talk and john into anything he only does what he really <laughs> you, wants to do you convince me to do things against my better judgment all the time <laughs> no I know for a fact if you're doing something with me, you've thought about it and decided you want to do it. Most of the time, I just want to do what you're doing. Aww. So it's not so Love much whatever. You. We're just continuing to add like this little bit of kind of white purple highlight to spaces because water is very, very dynamic. Rinse out a bit. It's looking kind of good, kind of okay, kind of happy. Now I'm going to grab my quinacridone and my navel's yellow light, or you know, tighten it yellow. PY53 is the pigment code. I'm adding some of this peach out into the water, just brushing. And the peach gorgeous. Mm-hmm. In the water. So nice. A big fan of the peach in the water. Lovely, lovely day. I can add a little of my cad red and uh, cad yellow to that peach mix. Mm -hmm. right. If I go in there like that, I get really kind of a even more vibrant one and it lets me Brighten the reflection. Kind of coming down the water. Look how glowy it is now. That's how you get that glow. Oh my goodness. We had a lot going on there, didn't we? You do. All right, let's call that a step. We'll come back and we'll start working the beach forward a little bit. So I have a chalk pencil. This is just a pencil made with white chalk. You could use actual chalk from a chalkboard. You could use the traceable and serial paper. You could use the gridding method. If you were going to be gridding, this might be a great place to put this in to draw her in. Um, I'm going to freehand her in. We'll see how that goes. All right. <laughs> I get asked about, you know, how to draw things like this a lot. And so the first thing I would do is I'm going to put... A sense of scale in what space do I feel like she's taking up in this world mm -hmm. that tells me a little bit about the perspective of the world you know how far above the Sun do I feel like she is mm -hmm. you know in in the view I'm gonna put a little head in and I like to put shoulders I often drop shoulders under my head it kind of gives me a sense of space I know I want her feet to kind of come down here so I'll drop her Hips there, I think. I'm going to just be sketching gesture, really, initially is what I do. I sketch the gesture, mm -hmm. and then I'll come in and put in the figure. And it's, it's interesting for me because I actually find that I think more when I'm drawing than when I'm that. painting. Yeah. 
Drawing is more of a gear grinder for me. Well, you're working out maths. Weird little maths inside my head. Now, I do want to have um, a little bit of light peeking through her legs, so I am going to maintain that. Mm -hmm. And I very much like the curve of everything, so I'm going to maintain that as well. However, this is a silhouette, so that's always sort of interesting and forgiving. And you just got to capture a couple of things correctly to get her where you want her to be. And that's about the gesture of her. It, there's a lot of gesture in here you've got to get right. And then you just kind of want to get certain proportionalities where you need them to be. Like, Where do I want this back half to be? And I like to give myself room to sort of change my mind, mm -hmm. you know. Also kind of coming at an angle, you've got a surfboard to contend with, which is good and bad, hmm. you know, um, because it's, it'll give us a, I like the heart, I like the heart shadow. It's one of the things that attracted me to this piece, mm -hmm. was that there was a heart shadow. I've just got to make sure that, I get nice line on her so she feels like the really cool figure that she is. Okay. At her waist is where I have to drop her elbow or it will pull the whole thing apart. Right. Um, that's just always an important thing. And then I will be blowing hair. This gives me room then to pull back. Interesting reflection that could come here. And here, there might be a little bit of light between those. And then, and I'm trying to decide how much do I want to exaggerate the heart in the reflection. And it, mm -hmm. and it's, and it, it is what it would do. So that's sort of interesting to me, just overall. I want to be aware of where that is. And so when I have her in, that's going to let me kind of think about where the beach is going to be. And we'll have some fun putting in her hair. That's how I would sketch her in. Um, if you are not comfortable drawing yet, that is completely okay. Drawing is a skill. It is not the only skill in art, though some people treat it like it is the only skill in art. Mm -hmm. And it is not the first skill you must master. There's all kinds of people who are fantastic artists who never draw, who work in textiles and other mediums, and it's just not part of their process. So I never like to perpetuate that propaganda. However, that said, it is fun. And uh, if you're enjoying painting, you may enjoy learning how to draw. So I highly recommend doing that as well. If you're ready for it, and it's not going to ruin your whole creative time. Yeah. But it is never cheating to use a traceable because that is an art technique <laughs> that they teach you in art school have been using since the renaissance so it's just very important that you know that so if somebody says something you know bizarre to you like that you're like oh well then michelangelo was a cheat so <laughs> right exactly it's not cheating all right i'll see you back and we'll start uh painting in the ocean no wait i don't want to see them back i could start painting in the ocean from here oh maybe we should call this step what should we we're do we're gonna call know. this a step and we'll be back okay <laughs> That was weirdly indecisive. Mm. Just like, maybe we start, maybe we stop. I don't know. What are we doing? Actually, I think it's because my brain was gearing on, do I want to do the silhouette at this stage or the reflections at this stage? And mm. I think I actually want to put in some silhouette at this stage. Okay. Just so I have that anchoring space. Now, you might be like, silhouette, you don't have any black. That's right, we don't. I'm going to begin my silhouette by getting some orange, some of my cad red. Mm-hmm. On my brush, on the toe, this is a number four round. And I'm going to come to her head and around her hair. And I'm going to very carefully kind of add a little bit of a, a red glow here. I may have to, I might number one monogram liner for her hair. Okay. Just because I want really lovely flowy hair. So I'm going to switch to my number one monogram liner for her hair and then come back in a second uh, for the number four round. Now I love, 
I love the way hair blows at the beach because mm-hmm. it just kind of goes up, it goes down, it it has its own really mind of its own. So I want to make sure that I capture the energy of that hair. And again, I'm doing it with my uh, CAD red. Because even though she's in silhouette, her hair is actually going to be backlit into the red. Oh, yeah. And that is going to be really nice, in my opinion, and my expertise. (laughs) But I I am not telling anyone what to do. I'm just saying I think this will be the right decision. You can see we're really kind of creating that activated hair that would be definitely there. I'm going to come down the side on where her elbow is with a little bit of red. And I I will for sure, you know, uh, be coming back with the silhouette. It's just nice sometimes to create a bit of a halo. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm going to outline the board. And now I'm going to come back into that number four round like we talked about. But already you can kind of see her there. Oh, yeah. So take your CAD red over to your dot purple. Add red over to your dots purple, and I'm going to get a little bit of my titanium white. I know. We're going to paint this in. A little more white up at the top. And a little more purple. And you have a shadowy surfboard. Well, the thing is, is in this type of lighting, it is a silhouette. And it's easy to say, okay, well, it's, it's, it's a black silhouette, but it's really rarely actually a black silhouette. So it's important to capture those little moments that are are not, in fact, completely black. Mm -hmm. And we're not even going to use black because we're going to use the oxazine purple. Which a lot of people think is black on the palette. I'll just come in with my number four round and just very carefully paint this in. Mm Mm-hmm. I can kind of see that actually happening there. Yeah. You can come back and fill this in. And that helps just create a little bit of her silhouette shape in relationship to her board. Mm -hmm. And sure, for the purposes of this, she will feel like she is silhouetted in black. But you can see she just clearly is not. And it really looks much more um, realistic is the word, but it's not realism. I mean, it's, I don't know. Well, we don't really do, we have some impressionism in the painting, for sure, because we're not completely hiding it. But I I would have to say that we don't really, I would say we do, um, uh, there's a word for it. It's like a romanticized type of realism. Yeah. You know? That's what that, and it's painterly. You know, you're not trying to hide the fact that you have brush strokes. Yeah, we're not hiding that this is a painting. And that's, there are different art forms that do. It's like where they don't want you to know that you can see a brush stroke. Very much so. And that's a lot of times what we're talking about when we're talking about something being loose. 
for something being tight mm -hmm. is we are talking distinctly about if you can see the brush stroke and the color mix and the process. If at any point I've gotten too thick with something or not thick enough, I can always come back with a color and kind of erase out, which I may do at the thighs mm -hmm. in a minute. I'm going to turn to the side just because that's going to be a better angle to paint her in. And you can see if I do any depth of purple at all, it is black. Mm, yeah. And we will for sure be taking the number one monogram liner and uh, really defining those hairs that are blowing off to the side. Yeah. Um, I do want to kind of come in with the peach and kind of trim back in on her legs some. So I will come with my ocean color that I have over here at the side mm -hmm. and just see if I need to. Oh yeah. So I can I can come back if I have if I have anything that's not making me happy. I'm not stuck. Right. And that's important to realize because sometimes when you're doing a figure and if you've never done a figure before, I mean to let you know right now, it is super, if you've never painted a figure before, you've got to promise me you're going to be really forgiving of yourself. It takes a minute to understand the proportions of figures the way silhouettes work, how many heads is a body, mm -hmm. uh, you know, how many heads by age is a body, because <laughs> you kind of measure bodies by heads, you know, what it takes to get there. So if you're just learning, you know, give yourself a minute to just learn. Oh, that adds a lot of depth. I very much like it when we pull a little red into the hair. And there's her hair just kind of really blowing. I like that. Mm -hmm. I can also at this stage kind of come in and add a bit of an implied fin. Fin, and you can even. Oh, yeah. Just a little bit to her board. It's important to people that surf. They surf, they're going to know that there should be fins there to beat them in the head when the <laughs> leash drags them into the beach and then beats them in the head with their board. You know what I mean? <laughs> the death leash. And it's always like a thing like, well, I really don't want to go get my board. But if I'm tethered to it, there's going to be that other experience of being dragged into the shore. And then there's always like the fin hits you in the head. So and then but you're like, really don't want to go get your board. Hmm. Six of one, half a dozen of another choices. See, this just seems like a shark bait activity. specifically like i'm gonna go pretend to be a seal for a bit i know you feel that way let me just bring this here and i'm gonna go ahead and do this little silhouette back here and kind of like these little stripes But I love the idea that it's a it's a bit of a heart. Mm -hmm. I love that idea. Because it's like saying, I love surfing. If you have a little surfer in your life or a big surfer, because surfing is a sport that people tend to do lifelong. Uh, so 
This is a gift you could give. You could give it for Mother's Day to if you have a surfing mom. They happen. We had a neighbor that was a surfing mom, so I know that they're real. Mm-hmm. <laughs> surfing moms are real. <laughs> you got to believe it. All right. Wow, that's amazing. That is looking super duper good, and I'm really, really kind of very happy with that. Yeah. You know, and come in and get a little bit of red and yellow. And come a little bit to a couple places. Sometimes I just like to add a little glow. Just a bit. It's a little touch. Wow. Little touches of glow. All right. We've got a paint in the reflection. I think we'll be either last step or second to last step Ooh, at this stage. This is getting close. Yeah, it's getting really close. So now I'm going to kind of pull together the reflections on the beach, what's happening there, the shadows, the wetness, all of those things that kind of make it, you know, the awesomeness that it is. I'm going to be using a number eight bright, right? So I'm going to be using a number eight bright, but I'm going to be using one that's made of hog bristles. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get it wet and then wipe off on the towel because I don't want it to be so super wet that I can't work with it. And let's begin with a very bright orange. So I'm going to take my cad red to my cad yellow and get a very, very bright orange going. And carefully around her because I don't want to mess her up. And I may come in with a pointed brush to paint around her. Okay. Just putting in some bright 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 orange. Come along here right up to the edge of that water. Just brushing that in. On the outer edges, I like it to be a little deeper to the cad red, and then towards the interior, it can be a little more um, to the cad yellow. Mm -hmm. Not really going to take it deep into where the purple sand is, that reflection. Again, just a little darker orange to that outer edge. Does not hurt. Mm -mm. And then you can even kind of come in and add some of that reflection, that, that brighter red. Starting to say things are reflective. I'm going to wipe up my brush and I'm going to get a lot of yellow on it. Wow. Just making sure our shore feels like it's got a little bit of that water reflectionness. Coming back. And I've got to make sure that I'm going to try to make sure that they're fairly straight down. So that's what you see me doing here is I'm just making sure I'm not getting off the straight axis of them. That's looking really nice. I like that quite a lot. I'm going to rinse out. And I'm going to come back and I will grab my number six bright hog that we had from earlier. Mm -hmm. 
And I'm going to make sure that some of this bright orange also is maybe hitting the water a couple places, just coming down. Just enough for it to be of interest. Right there. Really coming down right there in that front mm -hmm. little lip there. This is very good. Looking good. Let's come back here and we're going to kind of do the quinacridone and the peaches, all those really other kind of crazy fun colors. So if I get my pad red and the, it's that really cool cad red, Naples yellow, magenta kind of look. Mm -hmm. We're going to come back here. Or just work that wonderful set of colors. Wow, that that beach is really coming together. Yeah, it'll pull together really fast when it's when it when it finally finds its little journey in. Your beach has a journey. A little more magenta to the outside here. I haven't even gotten the really wild shadows that would happen in this space out mm -hmm. that make it all so wet. I can come in and add a little more of my Naples yellow and white to it, and then kind of continuing on from these. So it is coming out that way. Just brush back and forth. Mm -hmm. This kind of implies a wet area in this weird zone. A little more white into it. So that's looking pretty cool. Mm hmm She's just there looking out at the water. Everything is clearly pretty wet. Pretty super wet. I'm going to get into my dioxazine and my quinacridone, and I'll let it mix into this other area that I kind of already had going. And I can put darker space, maybe a little shadow kind of right there, right to the side. I'm going horizontal. Mm-hmm. But I just want that dimensionality. I come along here, the toe of the brush. So it's pretty on pretty on its tippy toe. And add some shadow there. I'm just breaking the lines up. Mm -hmm. They would be because sometimes they would be broken up. Almost a glaze. The shadows are as important as the highlights. In oh, yeah. Thing. Trying to capture them. It's not heavy with my paint. You know, and I can even get into the glaze to be like, no, no, it's definitely a glaze. If you're having trouble controlling that, it's okay to come in and say, I need it to be a glaze. For this to like totally work. And I'm gonna come in with more magenta, maybe a little white. I'm gonna break up some of this. Mm -hmm. Which again is what helps it feel.
a smidge wet, which it is now feeling kind of like a smidge wet. And I'm going to take my detail brush. I'm going to get a little purple and white going here. And I'm going to add little areas. Actually, I'll start with the dark because you may be able to see it better with the dark and then I'll come in with the highlight. Start with a little bit of your monogram liner and your dot ox purple. You can always put a few stones mm -hmm. out or in the shells. Sand. Yeah, they're little things that happen. <laughs> the little seabirds are always looking for. But also, sometimes you'll have bubbles and things. And it's nice to talk about them as well. And have little bits of water or foam. I'm going to... Make sure I add those little details, and rinse out, and then get back into that light color. It's, it's not a total white because it's got a little bit of the purple in it, but it is very light for the space. And then you can kind of start to see that little sea foam happening there. Wow. Just little bits. Little bits. See if I'm happy, right? Maybe a wave had just hit and come in and done some stuff. And come along here. Just a little bit along the edge of that wave. A little bit along the edge of that wave. Mm -hmm. Those little details can make a big difference in the way your water reads. A little dashing. Just a little bit. Yeah. A little reflection. That's what we did. Pretty nice. That's what we do. Oh, I like that very, very, very much. Doesn't that look lovely? Mm -hmm. Wet. It's happy. It's a gorgeous painting of a silhouette on a sundown day. And you kind of get a sense of how those purple skies happen and how those reflections happen. I think we're good. Do you think we're good? Yeah. Let's give it a sign. I guess I'll go ahead and use that really fun purple that I had just made. Is it's already here? Another day in landscape and water. Mm -hmm. I hope you guys really liked today's class because I think it was Oh, fine. I loved it. <sighs> Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.